you know, uh, the average person just dealing with so much, uh, clearly over the past two years with the pandemic, with COVID, that's seeming like it's getting somewhat under control. And now we have this. Now, Russia, Ukraine, uh, it's very far away. And a lot of people who may not pay attention to the news or what's going on are saying, hey, that's not in my country. Uh, what do you say to them about how this will affect really just their everyday life going forward, whether this is uh, day one of the attacks or more days to come? We are in a global economy, have been for a while. And, uh, you know, if, if, so, if uh, you know, if somebody sneezes in uh, in Europe in the economy, we're going to cough mm. over here in the U.S. It's just the way it is. Uh, you know, when we haven't even heard from China uh, on, on all this as well, you know, China is one of the, the largest coal users. You know, when we talk about climate change, you know, the U.S. Uh, as, as it should to reduce the carbon emissions. But 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 uh, the number two uh, carbon emission country is China. So if they don't do anything, we're hurting our economy to contribute to uh, to stop global warming with carbon production. So, you know, we're in a global world and, and we are not alone and we're impacted more by the economics and the supply and demand uh, in, in Europe and in China. Look, I, the fact of the matter is there is inflation in, in Europe uh, and when they export their goods to the U.S., and we have a balance of trade deficit, which means we import more than we export. We're paying more for the higher cost inflationary products that are produced in, in Europe. So we're a global economy. We, we can't escape the fact that what, what we do impacts Europe and Asia and what Asia and Europe does impacts us.